So now I want to just show you. So we we do that. Uh, and we use a lot of drugs. We go ahead and get the diseases, and then we're going to solve our diseases by getting a bunch of drugs. So I'm really raising a really serious question here. We live by eating the wrong food, first off, grossly. We eat the wrong food. And we hope we're going to solve our problems by, oh, there's going to be a drug, this, a drug, that. So, so we use pharmaceuticals. The U.S., in this chart here, what I'm showing, and this is the not the Office of uh, Economic Cooperation and Development, the more Western kind of country, more or less. But the U.S. here, we're number one in the use of pharmaceuticals. Here we're eating all this good food, really rich in animal food and fractionated plant foods, and that's another story. But in any case, we eat the wrong food, and we have to use a lot of drugs. That's the state of affairs in this country right now. We're using the most pharmaceuticals of any country in the world. Secondly, I hear I put here use only country. The U.S. is the only country who advertises on TV prescription drugs. That's not quite true. There's another country, New Zealand, has sort of done this, but I've actually been interviewed by somebody in New Zealand who says they have on their legislature right now the opportunity to stop that practice. I haven't seen it happen yet, but nonetheless, the U.S. is doing this. Uh, we advertise uh, prescription drugs. In fact, about 75, between 70 and 75% of our advertising on TV is for drugs. So they, the, the, the marketing, the market affair, the outfits in this country have control of our minds. They're telling us what to do. You know, to, they, to use this drug, that drug, and, and all we need to do is have a lot of them be sick. That makes money. So it turns out also the use of uh, prescription drug side effects for all kinds of reasons, worth a couple of seminars on this alone. Uh, this prescription drug, prescription drugs are all are going to have side effects, unpleasant side effects, including death, of course. It turns out that the, the deaths, the, the side effects is a number three, according to some estimates, number four, this kind of trades off in that area. Uh, there's cause of death in our country by trying behind heart disease and cancer. So just taking these drugs, you know, to to, uh, to try to solve and reverse those diseases, the heart disease and cancer and all the rest, it's a, an equation, it's a, it's a phenomenon that's become our medical system. It's really, it's, it's horrific, actually, it's, it's dramatic. And so I'm, I'm going to suggest you for your thinking that we're, we're, we're featuring the consumption of animal foods and wrong kind of plant foods, and then we're treating ourselves with these drugs, and that's what we get for it. Uh, another thing that I find kind of interesting in this set of, set of data, the U.S. is at near the bottom. In fact, it's last place among the, the, the more economically developed countries in life expectancy. Our life expectancy is going down. A little, a little tiny little bit at a time. We're using the most drugs, we eat the wrong food, and we live the shortest lives. We can put that, just, just think about that for a second. It pretty much uh, uh, is, is a sort of this summary pitch, I guess you could say. So this is a rationale for drugs. It seems like to me, if I want to be sarcastic about it, we just, we advertise these drugs and not say anything about what kind of food we should be consuming. And so we have, we die sooner. That's simple. Now, I want to show you, uh, bring this up to date in this first presentation. I'm going to be doing it more tomorrow, but I, I really want to... Uh, to uh, share with you uh, a recent story, especially related to the coronavirus, if you will, to show you the state of affairs. We did our study in China, and many of you may know about that. It's a huge, and New York Times called it the Grand Prix of all studies. Uh, it was a big study, and I could, I'll could i be talking briefly about that uh, uh, tomorrow. Uh, but in any case, uh, the one thing, one thing we did measure in China in that study uh, was that uh, we had information on liver cancer as a cause of death in China, more common there than here. Liver cancer is the cause of death that's caused by a virus, hepatitis B virus, really serious virus. More serious, than I would suggest, than the coronavirus that we had. Uh, and so we had collected in a, in a second version of the China study in 1989, all the stuff we did in the first one. The second we had joined Taiwan and mainland China together to collect the information. But in any case, the data I'm going to show you here comes from 1989. 
And so in January in 2020, January 2020, is when we were told about, you know, this horrible, horrific uh, virus that we're going to experience, the coronavirus. And the first thing they're, they're going to do is going to get to us, get us a vaccine, if you will. And so it went. And so during the 1920s, we're all putting masks on due to this and that, everything else, and this horrible virus is around us, and et cetera. Um, and so I go back in the early 19, in the early 2021, or late, actually, of that year, I went back and collected data from that second China study because we had some information regarding this virus, not the coronavirus, but this virus, which is just as bad as the other one. Uh, in both cases, they're, they're basically controlled by the immune system, I should say, and nutrition. So here we got it for hepatitis B virus. You can see 8,900 adults in this study. Okay, and just to show you schematically where and to try to simplify things, I want to show you what happens to a virus when it's out there in the environment and we get infected. And, and you know, we might get it from the air, mostly from the air, if you will, or uh, sputum from, uh, let's say, our, our saliva and stuff like that on our food and the water. Uh, so we get viruses from here and there uh, that's been around with us ever since we've been calling ourselves human. So the virus comes in and lands on us by different means. It, when, when it was active, that's when we test positive. That's what that means. When we test po po virus, if it tests positive for a virus, uh, that virus is the actual protein of the virus that's circulating in our blood. It's called antigen. We had a chance in that second study to measure the prevalence of hepatitis B virus in this large population and to see what effect on had on liver cancer rates because that's what it causes. So we, we measured in all these different people how much active virus they had. In other words, how much are positive. It turns out, uh, you know, if, those, if that virus comes into us, kind of circulates in our system, eventually this particular virus is going to cause death from liver cancer. The third leading cause of death in the world, by the way, I should tell you. Uh, so the, the active virus then causes liver cancer death. It turns out, I, I was just floored by this here. We measured the amount of animal food in different ways in China at that time. And on average, the animal protein intake, just as an indicator, the animal protein intake on average in rural China was only 10% of what we, have, what we have in the West. I didn't I didn't think that's not enough to cause any problems. But it turned out people consuming even that smaller animal food they were the ones who got the liver cancer and died. Plant food, in contrast, those increased more plant food consumption could inactivate the virus by antibodies. How about that? Antibodies. I mean, all these viruses work the same way, by the way. So the plant food, people consume more plant food, they formed antibodies. And they formed these T cells. Uh, I didn't show you the data on that, but we had worked with them 20 years before in the laboratory, the T-cells in this particular case, uh, in, in an animal model, and we saw the same thing. But it turned out that people consuming plant food uh, formed antibodies, and they did not get the liver cancer. It was so dramatic. And they actually increased the production of T-cells and natural killer cells. You may remember messages before. They actually are the things from the immune system that keeps the disease under control. So the plant plant food people, they got the inactive virus. They, they got the, it was positive, yeah, you can't stop that. But that went to work, our immune system went, it goes to work and it's just basically not inactivates the virus. People consuming animal food, on the other hand, did not do that. They could they done up on the antibodies. They got liver cancer and they died. And I take this from data that we have never I had never seen in my career. Really extraordinary data. What we did in, in China in our study was have a lot of correlations. And when you treat them the right way, there's no problem with it. But I only reserved my comments uh, to those that are significant at the highest statistical level, P001. There are 11 risk factor correlations in that study that we did that converge the same outcome. In other words, what I've shown you here with the high, very high degree of statistical significance. Those who consume a small animal food, animal food, they get more cancer, more heart disease, more liver cancer deaths. This is exactly what we're seeing with, in our 
studies in the, uh, from other sources and of course in the laboratory over the years. They're really quite dramatic. I have all the data that we've collected over the years. Uh, I have to say this is the most, for me, is the most impressive data I ever saw. There was one exception here, but by the way, of all the ones that were significant, this level of probability, of one exception that did not quite, I have to be honest about it, did not quite make it that way. It looked like it was a methodological error, but be that as it may, 11 of these research correlations all converge the same direction to show us that eating any amount of animal food will increase the probability a virus is going to cause us problems. So I'm learning about this. We had all this data hadn't published at that time when it first came out in 2020. We heard about the coronavirus and, and that. And we and and I know that you know if, if you can take a person with already diseased, if you will, and see disease reversal. That's what we did. My friend Esselton did it with the heart disease, if you will. And so my my notion was that uh this is a replication of what we already know. That is, people consume animal food are going to have a problem. People consuming more plant food are going to get the solution. So I sent the paper in. I was quite excited about it. And what happened? They wouldn't even review it. These are the two leading journals, two of the three leading journals in Western literature. I've published in both of these journals before. I've published 300 and some uh, publications. I mean, I've been quite active in my publication over the years. And in this particular case, two of the leading journals, they wouldn't even allow my manuscript to be reviewed by the professionals. First time in my life I ever had that experience. In other words, people are in control of the science. They're not letting the science to see this. They didn't want to see this, obviously. So eventually I got it published. It was at a journal, uh, EC Nutrition, which is basically associated with the European Union. I think the only reason I got it published was because the the uh, Minister of Health for all of Europe in that in that group, uh, is someone I know, he likes what I do, and I think he probably I don't I can't say this for sure, so I want to be careful, but I think it had something to do with the fact that it was actually published in that journal, EC Nutrition was called. There's there's the copy of it right here. It was published eventually in, in 2021, but the reason I'm showing it is because you know this whole idea of nutrition being ignored, not taught in medical schools, right? Medical, med, med, MDs really don't know this there for the most part. So uh, they don't see this. So as I say, it's controlled. And in this case, we're seeing we're seeing the same kind of diet that reverses heart disease, prevents it, prevents cancer, reverses all those other diseases I just told you about. We see the same thing for viruses. And the title I sent in there, which was a mistake, I put a nutritional link for COVID-19. What I thought at the beginning of, beginning of the pandemic was that, you know, if we could just change our diet, we should be able to sustain the problem. And I had suspicions about what this whole thing was all about in the beginning. So actually, my wife and I had mostly already, of course, changed by that time. And uh, I'm 90 as I speak here now. She's just 83. So we're primary targets for getting the vaccine. <laughs> 